It is not really, a hydroxyl group is not necessary for activity. It can be uh, etherified, it can be esterified with retention of activity, indeed with slight increase in activity because of the increase in lipid solubility. Then we looked at position number seven, eight, and we say seven, eight and position number six usually go hand in hand where you have oxidation, uh, reduction, sorry, at position seven, eight, oxidation at position number six, where we get them uh, the the ohms, whereby the ohms or we can get the, the hydro ohms. And these ones all have got much higher activity than when you have the morphemes. Then we looked at position number 14, where you have the oxy derivatives. And in that position, you can, like oxycodone, oxymorphine, morphone, sorry, you can structure modify position number 14 and put a hydroxyl group. And anytime you put a hydroxyl group at that position with the other relevant changes that we did mention that that compound has much, much activity. And even when we look at the, the incidentally, even when we look at the an antagonists, you will find they have the same structure changes and uh, of course the necessary change at position number uh, uh, 17 to give you ant antagonistic activity. Then of course we looked at position number 17 and it, we did say that also that position you can ha have structural modification of the group there. Of course with methyl group giving you very, very good activity. And once you change that group to ethyl propyl, as you increase that group, you decrease the activity. And indeed we did mention you, when you change it to other groups like allyl group, the allyl group, that is about three carbon atoms, the unsaturation, then you introduce antagonistic activity. You introduce antagonistic activity. Of course, we can also change it to a cyclo, methyl cyclo group. And of course, we're going to look at antagonists yes, on their own. And even when you do so, the compound has antagonistic activity. There are structural changes that you do to these compounds and you allow these drugs to have mixed agonist antagonist activity we'll go back to that classification but sometimes you do structure changes and you allow the molecule to have usually agonist activity at the mu receptor and antagonist activity at the kappa receptor and therefore there are some drugs which will have mixed agonist antagonist activity like buprenorphine which we'll be looking at in a minute so we did mention that structural changes and uh, before, I, uh, of course, there was also the change at position number 17, where we say it again when you increase the size beyond five, like when you add an ethyl phenyl ring. And of course, we're going to see the, uh, such examples. Again, you increased agonist activity. And this is because the large group at position number 17 allows for uh, interactions, usually hydrophobic interactions with the receptor site A, which does not interact with morphine, which does not interact with the compounds when you have a very small group. So these are some of the changes we mentioned, we might have mentioned more, but in a nutshell, those are some of the changes that we, we have already discussed. So what we are saying is that morphine can be, we can consider it as a, we can consider it as a lead molecule, which can be structurally modified. And once you structurally modify it, you can change the activity. Remember, we did even mention a methoxyl group at position number three, which of course decreases analgesic activity again because you require a free meth a hydroxyl group at that position, but also introduces a new type of activity, which we call antitussive activity. So it is important for us to note, as we have always noted, that structural modification of a molecule can bring a lot of uh, uh, biological act differences, activity differences, and we're able to explain some of these differences because either the molecule does not bind, or either the molecule binds the receptor better, or the molecule is not able to bind the receptor very well because of steric hydrons, or the molecule is uh, binds the receptor, does bind the receptor, but it does not trigger. It binds the receptor, but does not trigger. Uh, the biological activity and therefore acts as an, an, uh, uh, an antagonist. And some of this are because of the type of group. The type of group that you have put at that position, is it a polar group? Is it a lipid, uh, is it a, 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 a lipid soluble group? What, are, what is the influence uh, of that group 
on uh, the receptor and even on, of course, the pharmacokinetics. So those are some of the changes and we we'll continue. Uh, we will look at just one more, we cannot still call it, one more change in one of the rings. And then now we will start, uh, we look at the compounds where now we start removing a whole uh, ring that you look at the nuclear where we change the nuclear so the next uh, with that small introduction just a small recap i hope we have reminded ourselves so let me enlarge this Yes, the last one we had looked at is a change at the nitrogen atom. So you can also change one of the rings. You can also change ring C and uh, add uh, some uh, uh, a dividing line. You add, you increase the number of rings. You can also increase the number of rings by adding a bond or adding some carbon atoms between carbon six and carbon fourteen. And once you do that, we call it annihilation. And once you do that again, it has been found that further increases activity and the resultant compounds are the ones we're calling the bane. So annihilation, adding a sixth ring across the carbon six and 14 of the carbon ring of morphine yields the bane compounds such as etophene, which are extremely potent analgesics. They are very, very potent. Again, when you add an extra ring, all we are saying is that we are adding lipid solubility and the molecule can penetrate the membranes much, much better. Etophene has a higher lipid solubility and help with binding affinity than morphine. We will, when we look at the structure of etophene, of course, it is a derivative of febane. You will find that you, you do not only do the annihilation, but you also add another group at position number seven and further increase its lipid solubility. Of course, still taking care of the water solubility for the compound to have a solubility or dissolution in the GIT if it is given orally. Replacement of the N methyl. So the same thing we were discussing. Again, the structural changes uh, that we have done on morphine uh, and can be done on most of these structures. So we are saying again, the placement of the N-methyl group. So of course, the etophene, the bane, the etophene has an N-methyl group of the, the bane with a methyl cyclopropyl group, like what we did mention is found in our traction, yields compounds with mixed agonist, antagonist, or, so either they can either have mixed agonist, antagonist activity or partial, agonist activity. For example, we have the compound we call buprenorphine, and buprenorphine is known to be a partial agonist. It is known to be a partial agonist. A partial op op opiate, it's a, it's a partial opiate agonist at mu receptors and an antagonist at K1 receptor. So it is considered to be a partial agonist. As an, as an agonist, it is still having very high activity when you compare it with uh, the other compounds but we are compare we are saying it's a partial organ agonist if you compare it with the etophines or if you compare it with etophine or the bane that's why we are saying it will be a partial agonist but when you compare it with morphine it's still is much active but when you compare it with this whole series of the third bains which have annihilation you find that it has slightly lower activity when you put the methyl cyclopropyl group at position of that position and uh, replacing the methyl group. Then you can mention the buprenorphine, and I think it is important you can first of all look at what we are talking about when we talk about the annihilation. Again, remember, although I've not numbered, that's position one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine there 10 11 12 so that's position 13 and that is position 14 there position 15 16 17 so if you look at this compound we are talking about this is position 14 and that is position 16 let me put the red color it's, it's better so this definitely there is position 14 and this, of course, here is position 16. 
So you can, sorry, six, sorry, position number six. So in fact, when you look, so we are looking at the annihilation where you add an extra, you add an extra, you can see the, the whole of this was our ring C, but we have added this carbon chain between the position number 14 and position number 16. And therefore you can see this is where, this is another, this, the whole of this there going this way. So if you look at it this way, that way, that way, that way, that way, this is a ring and this also a ring. And that's why we are saying in place of the previous five rings, now we have six rings. If you look at position number six, you can see also the hydroxyl group has been derivatized. It has been esterified, not esterified, but esterified into a methoxy group. Again, do remember we said that the position six hydroxyl group is not necessary for activity. When you esterify it, you block the polarity of the hydroxyl group and therefore increase activity. Again, if you look at position number seven, there's also structural modification at that position. So we have removed the double bond. Position number seven, there's structural modification. And as you can see that we have increased, increased lipid solubility. But so that we make sure that the molecule still has some water solubility. You can see the addition of that hydroxyl group there. So this is a tertiary, tertiary tertiary alcohol. So you have that hydroxyl group there still to maintain or to give to still give us some water solubility. So we are saying that is a buprenorphine. And remember we did mention you will, it is a matter of changing that group there. You can see that is methyl cyclopropyl derivative. And our group there, as we have already discussed, or is still retained to give this compound very, very good activity so that is our buprenorphine it's an example of a derivative of the third bands where you have uh, you have the where you have the n methyl group replaced the uh, cyclo a methyl cyclo propyl group and of course you do have a substituent at position number seven of course when you also put this substituent at position seven kindly note you are making the molecule bigger and this uh, uh, this uh, hydrophobic area can also be able to some extent interact remember with a site e or receptor site a sorry uh, receptor site a within the opioid receptor and therefore be responsible for higher uh, agonist activity so we can't be able to explain the agon higher agonist activity we can be able to explain the antagonist activity antagonist activity is because of the cyclo uh, the methyl cyclopropyl uh, group and i believe the higher agonist activity is because of that methoxy group and this group that also has been uh, placed at position number seven which of course will also interact as we have said with the position a or the receptor site A within uh, the opioid receptor. So uh, these compounds, you can see, you still have that group there, but not, but not very clear. There is that annihilation there, it's there. So the oripavines are those compounds where you have annihilation there, and then you can have a group there, and you can have group there. So the derivatives, so all those, uh, we call them, uh, uh, the ripper vines, meaning if the ripper vines can have different group, a different uh, uh, a, comp, uh, a substituent there and a different substituent there. When we mention a specific, like the bane, like a buprenorphine, those are very, very specific. They, are, they have specific, as you can see, the buprenorphine, this is its group at that position. And of course, it will have this group at position number 17. And of course it has the annihilation. So that's buprenorphine. When you talk about etophine, again, etophine maintains the, the N-methyl group. And of course you can see the group it has here. That is a group that it has there. And I would expect etophine because of the N-methyl group. And of course also this uh, compound to even have much agonist activity compared to buprenorphine because you know bu uh, buprenorphine because of the uh, uh, methyl cyclopropyl group it has it will have antagonistic antagonistic activity whereas etophine has a group the n methyl group which we say it is optimal for agonist activity so that's a different and a different class where we are saying 
that uh, this we can have analogs of morphine with six rings rather than five rings with a substitution at position number seven and then we can change the substitution at position number 17 and expect the same results as with the morphine analog so the sar is same as for the epoxy morphinans remember we call them epoxy morphinans because we have removed uh, in morphinan we have removed the ring at position four five so once we put the epoxy in fact we usually call them four four five this is the more the morphine derivatives this is the same as morphine four five epoxy morphinans because the morphinans do not have the four five so when you put the epoxy then you've gone back to morphine so sr is same as epoxy morphinans the ring f which is a new ring from remember the last one was e which is uh, the the furan ring the, the hydrofuran ring so ring f introduces additional lipophilicity Carbon-7 attachment can increase the lipid water partition coefficient, as we have seen, seen it especially. Like, if you look at buprenorphine, it has a tart butyl, so it increases lipid water solubility. But we say it also, it still has to bring in a bit of water solubility. If they are large enough, they may begin to bind the site A and increase the uh, immune receptor affinity, as we have discussed. This is especially if an aromatic ring, such as a phenyl ring, is attached. But of the drugs we have, none of them has a phenyl ring. But although they don't have a phenyl ring, they, they introduce, they are large enough, even if to just slightly interact with that site, uh, they can be able to slightly interact with that site and also bring in high lipid solubility. Uh, Buprenorphin contains a large acrimoity. It is 20 to 30 times more potent than morphine, has a longer duration of action, does not produce severe respiratory depression, and has low abuse potential. In fact, it's uh, respiratory depression gets to a ceiling. <coughs> it's respiratory depression gets to a ceiling. In other words, you get to a point where even if you further increase the dosage, you will not increase the respiratory uh, depression. Unlike morphine, the other morphine and analogs, where the respiratory depression is proportional to the dose. So that's one advantage of this drug because most of the addicts actually die of respiratory depression it also has a low abuse potential so it will not of course be liked by them and as we have said it is much more active than morphine we had mentioned etof etofine you can see that is a structure of etofine it is approximately a thousand times as potent as morphine because of this group so it is also more active than than buprenorphine because we have changed this a methyl cyclopropyl group to an N methyl group, as we've already said, which gives us very good activity. Of course, we have also this substituent here, which also will help to interact with uh, receptor A and also increase lipid solubility, as we have said. And arguably, is too potent to be released for human therapy. It is currently used as a tranquilizer for large animals like elephants. So, from what we have looked at, and uh, discuss the uh, morphine analogs. We, we are just asking a simple question. Morphine analogs, in terms of analgesic activity, in terms of toxicity, are they better or worse? And of course, depending on the groups that we are looking at. And when you look at most of those derivatives, you find that you, you are derivatized the hydroxyl group at position and number, you had uh, the hydroxyl group at position number three, you had another hydroxyl group at position number 14. And we are saying because of that, the molecule that you generate uh, more, more of the not binds the receptor better, has higher analgesic activity. And unfortunately for the morphine and analogs, the higher the analgesic activity, the higher the potential for abuse, the higher the toxicity. So morphine has three polar groups, the phenol, the alcohol and an amine. The analogs have either lost the polar alcohol group or have it masked by an alkyl or an acid group. They therefore enter the brain more easily and accumulate at the receptor sites in greater concentrations, hence a better analgesic activity. But do remember, if we esterify, the one we can readily esterify uh, is the hydroxyl group at position number six. The hydroxyl group at position number three requires to be free. And when we, uh, we, uh, we, we change it, we will esterify it with a small alkyl group which is spontaneous, not spontaneously, but which is hydrolyzed by esterases very rapidly because uh, the ester uh, linkage is very, very weak. Now we are done 
with the, the peripheral changes and even that one change uh, on ring C. And now we want to look at the nuclear ring substitution. So now we want to look at the rings and what can be done to the rings. Do we need all the, the rings that we have? We've already said we do not need them because we have already discussed them about the morphinans and the morphinans are when you remove. You can see if you look at this compound, uh, you had a ring here. You had a ring there, uh, the, the dihydrofuran. You can see in this particular compound, that ring has been re removed, but the, the hydroxyl group, the oxygen of uh, that ring has been retained at position number one, two, three, four, at position number four. And indeed, when that ring was retained, that compound didn't have very good activity. So you will find the actual morphinans do not have that hydroxyl group. Opening up the ether linkage, leading to form the catechotype ring system reduces analgesic activity. So when we remove, so here we have removed the ring as we have already said, and now we have formed the catechol, catechol kind of system. And the catechol side, kind of system, of course, is this one here where this is a catechol, where you have two hydroxyl group which are adjacent to each other and they attach to a phenyl ring. So that, of course, reduces activity. This molecule has very high, or that molecule has two, three polar groups, and therefore that molecule does not have any activity. The next, you can see 0 0.1 times the potency of morphine. So what was next done? The morphinans are similar in structure to the morphine analogs, but lack uh, the earring. And of course, the removal of the earring, it goes completely such that you do not have the hydroxyl group at position four, as we have seen in the catechol derivatives. So we remove the earrings. The earring found, uh, is found in the natural carrying opioids. And so you remove the earring, which is found in the naturally occurring opioids. You also remove the six hydroxyl group and you remove the seven H double bond. Remember, we did mention if you remove the six hydroxyl group, you will also increase activity. You yeah. also had said if you remove the seven H double bond slightly, you can increase activity. So all these things that have been done to the morphine to give us the morphinans result in an increase in activity so therefore when we look at this compound if this was an is a ch3 we do expect that drug to have much higher activity than for sure uh, 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 to have much higher activity than uh, morphine and of course but we look at the structure and let us remember the method the hydroxyl group at position number three is needed it is essential it is necessary for analgesic activity or opioid binding and if you look at this compound you look at this compound we have only removed this ring we removed that ring of course we have also said we've removed the bond between position eight and seven we have removed also the hydroxyl group at position number six since the oxygen we had we have removed was not carrying any number the numbering of this compound remains the same the lead compound there or one of the the prototype being levofano, so the prototype being levofano, and you can see it is ex it is actually the numbering is the same one two three four five six seven eight. Then we go to nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. So the numbering does not change because of the fact that the ring that we have removed. The oxygen had not been numbered. The only thing that changes this molecule is that there is an increase in the lipid solubility, and therefore that compound has much, much higher activity. The other thing that changes is that if you are to draw the actual this ring, the ABC, the ring C, normally in morphine, this ring in morphine, it has it carries the boat conformation. It has a boat conformation. But the minute you remove the six hydroxyl group and the double group, uh, bond, this ring is able to carry the chair conformation. So that's another another difference that on removal of the six hydroxyl group and the removal of the double bond, then you find in the, the morphinans, uh, the ring C carries or takes the 
there's chair confirmation and because of this chair confirmation it is better it is able to even interact better with the hydrophobic uh, site that is within uh, the uh, the, the opioid receptor so we find that these drugs because of that removal of the ring the move of sorry the move of the hydroxyl group and formation of the board conformation sorry the chair sorry the chair conformation there is better interaction with the hydrophobic areas of uh, the opioid receptor so the numbering system of none of morphinans is the same as for morphine compounds are synthetic and are obtained as racemates the more potent isomer again has the R configuration, alpha to the nitrogen. Again, the same thing. So this uh, stereochemistry is still retained. So this group there, alpha to the nitrogen, still carries an R configuration. Again, very, very important. So, so again, very important. If we look at that compound, we still can identify uh, the chirocenters. Of course, we have lost chirality. At position number six, we've lost that chirality. We have, uh, we do not, of course, uh, have any chirality at position number five. So our chiral centers now is chiral position number 13 is still a chiral center. Uh, position number 14 is still a chiral center. Uh, position number nine <coughs> is a chiral center. So I think previously position number six was actually a Cairo center. You remember? The structure is the same. So remember, our position number five was a Cairo center. Our position number six was a Cairo center in morphine. Our position number nine, of course, still retaining its chirality, and of course, also 13 and 14. So we have actually lost two Cairo centers in morphine and namely position five and position number six the c ring also has changed in its conformation from the board conformation to the chair conformation giving us better interaction with the receptor but the configuration of carbon nine still remains the same where it carries an r an absolute r uh, uh, configuration an absolute R configuration, and that indeed is necessary for activity. When the R configuration changes to S, then you will have uh, the, the uh, methyl funds, whereby the methyl funds will mainly have antitussive activity. They will have the dextro, the, the dextro isomers as opposed to the liver isomers. You can see, like we talked about liver funnel. And of course, it will be dextrophenol. So that the change in that stereochemistry will result in compounds that mainly have antitussive activity and very low analgesic activity. So again, stereochemistry there uh, also very similar to that, of course, of the morphine and analogs, but of course, with the understanding that you have lost two chiro centers. So we are therefore noting that removal of the earring increases lipid water partition coefficient. In general, morphinans are more potent than the corresponding 4-5 epoxy morphinans. 4-5 epoxy is the morphine analogs. The either bridge does not interact with the receptor, and therefore its removal does not affect mu receptor affinity, for example, uh, the morphinans. And indeed, its removal increases so this is not complete so you say it's removal of course it does not affect binding but it's removal increases the lipid water partition coefficient and therefore better penetration of the uh, lipid membranes the level of total isomer with our configuration alpha to the nitrogen is known as le levofanol so the levofanol is that which has the r configuration alpha to the nitrogen levofanol has higher analgesic activity than morphine it is it also has some antacid and tassive activity, but we do not use it because once it has analgesic activity, it will also have abuse, high abuse, uh, abuse potential. So you opt to alter the group that is at position number three and you get the dextro instead of the levo and the dextro will have lower abuse potential. It has high, acti high activity is due to 
because it's higher lipid water partition coefficient, which have, we have explained is coming in because of the loss of the ether oxygen and carbon six hydroxyl group and higher receptor binding. And some of the higher receptor binding we have said is because the removal of the hydroxyl group and the formation of the tear conformer allows for better interaction with the receptor. Let me, unfortunately, let me ensure my girl keeps quiet. <clears throat> so we have talked about the highest receptor affinity because one, you've also removed uh, the polarity, you have increased the lipid solubility at that ring C, but also you have changed the configuration of that, of the conformation rather, conformation of ring C to be that of the chair conformation, which better interacts with the receptor. Advantages of a morphine include better oral bioavailability and longer duration of action. Disadvantages, of course, it will have higher toxicities, including addictive tolerance, addiction to tolerance, and all those other things like hallucinations and all those withdrawal symptoms and all those things. Then we go, of course, we are looking, this is now the derivative of, of levofano. Uh, and all we are saying is that uh, if you have, uh, you have, you change, like this is level methofan, of course, the further one was levofano because it had a drop the group at that position. And when you put a methoxy group, by addition of that methyl, you add the methyl apple. So what well, this is level methofan and left the level methofan mainly has, mainly, uh, will of course have lower, it is the structural modification like that of morphine to codeine. So it will also have higher and passive activity and lower and lower analgesic activity. But of course the liver one is where the configuration at position number nine is to uh, the R configuration. So in level methofan, if you change the configuration at position number nine now to be dextro is where you will get the dextro methofan. So dextro methofan is a derivative of level, level methofan, which of course is a derivative uh, of morphine in terms of removal of ring E. But of course, when you do those changes, uh, definitely the resultant compound is an antitussive. And indeed, if you, when you go out there and look for the cough syrups, you will find they have dextromethofan because it has much lower uh, analgesic activity, much lower addictive ability, and all those other negative side effects. The extra isomer of morphine is known as a dextrofan and is devoid of analgesic activity and associated toxicity. It might have just a bit, a little, and therefore associated toxicity. It is a potent antitussive agent or methylation of dextrofan. So the dextrofan is uh, when, dextrofan is when you do not have the methoxy group here. Me, sorry, the methyl group there. So if you had an OH group there, then that is what we will call uh, the dextrofan. And of course, with the R co configuration, uh, with the, sorry, S configuration at position number nine. So uh, all methylation of dextrofan produce dextromethofan, which has higher antitussive activity. Dextromethofan is a potent, is as potent as codeine as an antitussive without a spiritual depression and associated side effects. So it's much safer even than codeine. And no wonder when you look at quite a number of, as I have said, when you look at quite a number of the cough syrups, you will find that they do have dextromethofan. And of course, we are saying levomethofan can be converted to levofano. Remember, the only difference is a method group there. So oxidative O oh, demethylation, oxidative O oh, deacylation, demethylation, you give us back levofano. And then, of course, that can undergo O oh, glucuronic conjugation at that position. So that is the morphinans, just tune morphinans. And just like uh, you can uh, uh, you can derivatize these drugs into various various uh, sorts. If these ones are mainly organic sorts, but of course, even organic sorts. Remember, they have the carboxylic group like that. That's it, a tartrate. Does that carboxylic group? Does that carboxylic group? Does that hydroxyl group? Does that hydroxyl group? So although it's an organic uh, an organic uh, acid, it has 
many it has the hydroxyl group it has the carboxylic group so they will increase water solubility so when you derivatize these drugs into the organic salts they will still have a slightly higher water solubility and hence they can be they can they have they can have better dissolution and uh, and uh, dissolution sometimes even for parental use so you have levofenotartrate uh, should be tartrate levofenotartrate and if you look at levofenotartrate we've already discussed that of course is a hydrogen there so that is important and of course at the r there you have your uh methyl group you have your methyl group so of course when you have the tartrate this sort here Will just be brought here and this nitrogen will be protonated so that high nitrogen will be protonated and this salt will be next to that because it will be carrying the negative charge then you also have butophano tartrate and the difference of course for butophano the difference is just the r group r prime prime where you have uh, this uh, the methyl cyclo uh, butyl cyclobutyl ring so that group yeah, so it's a huge group, it's a bigger group that you have put at that position. So of course it will be uh, having lesser agonist activity and perhaps more antagonist activity. So dextromethophan, again, dextromethophan is just, you had already looked at that. It has a CH3 group there, it has a CH3 group there, but of importance is to note that uh, the stereochemistry at this position number nine it will, it will be different because it has to carry the s configuration rather than the r configuration and of course is because uh, it's, it's a method one here must be a methyl group and that must be a methyl group as we have discussed so that's the main difference and of course the butophano levofano those those differences for these ones the structure is the same the difference is the group that is found at R prime prime. And at least you can see the buto is telling you there's a butyl group there somewhere. So the buto tells you there is a, a, a butyl group and the tofano, you find that of the orphano, orphano. So the but, the orphano, orphano are in both of them. And therefore that perhaps can give you, can help you when you're trying to draw the structures of these compounds. The structure activity relationship of the morphinans is very similar to that of the morph morphine. So we, the same thing we have discussed, a three hydroxy group is optimal and a three methoxy is less active. And we have looked at the, the methophans uh, and compared them with the liver, like the levofano and so on. The nitrogen substituent produces the same activity as in the morphines. We've seen the same. We have looked at the levofano, butofano. No other substituents may be added to the A ring. The C ring must be unsubstituted. Position 14 may be substituted in the beta hydroxyl group with increase in an algesic activity. And I did, if you look at butofano, if you look at butofano, you can see it carries hydroxyl group at position number 14. So butofano carries a hydroxyl group at position number 14. Already remember all these compounds do not have the 7A double bond. They do not have the hydroxyl group at position number, number, number six, but there can be the only other allowed substitution as you have seen in butofano is a hydroxyl group at position number 14. You can't have anything else. And just as we have discussed before, hydroxyl group at that position will further increase agonist activity when you compare if you compare the butophano which has a hydroxyl group and the other compound which will not have a hydroxyl group you will find the butophano has much higher activity because of the hydroxyl group at position number 14. so position 14 may be substituted the beta hydroxyl group with increase in analgesic activity and we do have an example of butophano so the SAR there is no need of even looking at uh, going again back. Uh, whatever we have discussed remains the same. And we have the levalofan. Then, and levalofan now, the only difference again is the group at that position. We have the allyl group. And of course, no wonder the extra L there. Levalofan, 
and, and it has antagonist five times nilofin, weak agonist activity. So uh, you can see that that group there. And we did mention whenever you put that group, the allyl group, the allyl group brings in antagonist activity, but it also has weak agonist activity if you compare when you compare this that drug to nalofin. The nalofin compound, I will look at the structure. I think we never looked at the structure, but nalofin looks nalofin is very similar to morphine. The only difference nalofin and uh, the only difference between nalofin and morphine is that morphine will have an N methyl group and nalofin will have an allyl group like is found in the fan. So that's the only difference. We are saying therefore, if we have to compare nalofin and levalofan, levalofan has much much higher antagonist activity. Because of course the this group, the early group, is responsible for antagonist activity. And then of course we've already said that the, the morphinans have much, much higher activity. And therefore, even when it comes to antagonist activity, in comparison to morphine analogs, you expect them to have higher activity than the morphine analogs. Then you have the cyclophan. The cyclophan again, very similar, it seems. The only difference again is that group there. Again, it's a narcotic antagonist, strong agonist than, uh, than morphine, but it is not in use because it was found to be hallucinogenic. It is hallucinogenic. We have already looked at butofano, and as we have said, butofano has that extra beta hydroxyl group at that position. It's a strong agonist and morphine, weak antagonist, and indeed, butofano, we do classify it as a mixed antagonist uh, drug. Again, when we look at once we understand, uh, the, sorry, once we understand the structural modification in morphine, we are actually almost repeating the same, and uh, th that repeat will have similar effects. And when we look at this, we are saying the n allyl derivative of the valofan has higher mu receptor affinity compared to morphine and nalofine. So, and we have said it will have higher because you have changed, you have changed this structure and that structure has better binding and we have said some of the one of the reason is change of that group there you can see it when you look at it no nanofin because that's what we are calling the boat conformation and once we put the uh, the chair conformation the resultant structure the resultant molecule has better interaction with the opioid Receptor. So we are saying, therefore, the valofan has much higher activity than nalofin, as we have seen. That's the structure of nalofin. Nalofin is just morphine, where the N methyl group has been replaced with an N allyl group, and we have already looked at butofano, and of course that is butofano. But of course, butofano will have much higher activity than nalofin. Antagonist activity than nalofin, as we've already discussed. And more often than not, you want to compare those compounds that have the same substituents. And butofano has a higher mu receptor affinity compared to morphine. This is due to the 14 hydroxyl group and with the following advantages. This we have already discussed. It has little dependence, liability. It has limited respiratory depression, which we already mentioned. It can be considered to be a mixed agonist, antagonist. K, uh, it has a K agonist and mu antagonist. So it has agonist activity at K and mu antagonist activity, susceptible to significant fast pass metabolism and administered parenterally or intranasally. This is because of its uh, fast pass metabolism. Kappa agonists have lower ceiling and algesia effects and are not as effective as mu agonists in severe pain. So the best agonists are the mu agonists, but you can see butofano is a K agonist and it has antagonist activity at mu. So not very, very effective for pain, and, but of course it has, we have said, it has mixed agonist, antagonist activity. Metabolism of levomethofan, levomethofan again, levomethofan, remember it is just that. We had also mentioned that uh, by cytochrome 2D6, all mixed uh, function oxidases, where you have oxidative O demethylation at position number three to give us levofano. 
once you get levofano then you can get glucuronic conjugation especially at that particular position uh, to get the glucuronide highly water soluble readily removed from the body we had already mentioned that so that now finishes the more finance and of course we have given several examples so from there we are not yet done we can still further modify we can still further modify uh, morphine the basic the prototype morphine such that now we remove ring c so this time we are removing the whole of ring c but we leave where the ring c was we leave uh, appendages, app, app, uh, appendages whereby we are look, leaving small substituents r1 and r2 those are coming from what was part of ring c and we still find even when we do this we get what we call the benzomorphans so now we have removed ring e now we have removed ring c and we have the benzomorphans and they were still found to have very good activity so benzomorphans are also similar in structure to the, to the morphine analogs but they lack ring c and ring e uh, found in the naturally occurring opiates their general structure is as shown below so as i have said uh, this group here very important and that group there and we are going to learn that the orientation of these two groups is also very very important in terms of uh, opioid activity and we, you know so we can now say this was our ring d this was our ring b this we have removed c sorry i'm starting like the tetracycline so this was our ring a <laughs> This was our ring B. So we have ring, removed ring C. And now we have still, this was our ring D. And we have removed ring E. So now we can say we have A, B, C. So our piperidine ring, which was our ring D, now becomes our ring C. And it is of importance is the substituents that are found at these positions. Of course, now, since we have removed the whole ring, uh, the numbering will also change we have removed a whole ring and because we have removed a whole ring the numbering of this compound will also change and normally they prefer to number it such that uh, as you can see the numbering uh, system changes from that of the four five epoxy more finance and more finance and you can see now we are giving the uh, the final ring prime one prime two prime three prime four prime remember before we were starting from here coming this way so one prime two prime three prime four prime and now when we come to these other two rings we have the two rings we have the ring b and you can see now it has changed it's no longer cyclohexene it is still cyclohexane or it's usually cyclohexene because of that bond there sorry about that so it's your cyclohexene because of that bond there and of course we have our piperidine ring at that position so this ring now position number one is our previous position number nine so we start numbering from that position there and that becomes our position number one the nitrogen is two three four five then you go backwards this way six seven eight and then position number nine quite i don't know why they do that quite stressful but that is how they do the numbering of that, that particular compound. The benzomorphans of interest is to note that our previous position number one, nine becomes position number one. You can still see there's chirality at that position. And now, of course, we have a new position number five, which has chirality there. We have a, a new position number nine, also chirality there. Again, of interest, to note is what we had said earlier that you do require you do require a quaternary carbon and that's why we are saying this group there very important you do require quaternary carbon and you can see the quaternary carbon which was carbon number 13 in the morphine and the and the morphine and analogs has now become position number five and you can see that is a quaternary carbon and it is still separated from the nitrogen with two carbon atoms the morphine rule we said you require quaternary carbon separated from the terminal nitrogen by two carbon atoms it is still obeyed 
that rule is still obeyed. Hydroxyl group is obeyed. Phenyl ring is obeyed. So quite a number of the, the rules, the morphine rules, even with this compound, the tertiary amine, still obeyed. And therefore, the compound will have opioid activity. Uh, op uh, it will be able to interact with the opioid receptors because it obeys the morphine rule. So I hope you will be able to, to, uh, to note this uh, the structure difference and to understand, as we have said, to, under, to, to note that the R3 is quite important because it is responsible for giving us a, the quaternary carbon that is also a requirement in the activity of the narcotic analgesics. Benzomorphans, effects on binding the receptor on the two prime position and the end substituent modifications are the same as that of morphine. So now it is the two prime. You see, you have to remember now, the two prime is the hydroxyl group and the other one was the uh, end substituent. Those the effects, the same, same as the, those ones for morphine. Therefore, there is not any major difference. The only difference is in the numbering. So the positions, of course, will not carry the same numbering because you have lost quite a portion of the morphine. And like previous series, the dex isomers retain analgesic activity, but the liver isomers are more potent. So also the dex isomers do have some analgesic activity, but the liver isomers, again, are uh, more potent. Again, telling us the importance, significance of stereochemistry. The liver isomers have the R configuration at carbon one, which is alpha to uh, the nitrogen as in morphine carbon nine. So again, we go back. So we are saying, remember this, as I said earlier, this was the carbon nine in uh, the morphinans and even in morphine and analogs. So there is still retention of R configuration at position one because it is the same as carbon nine in the other drugs. So we are only saying, we are only emphasizing that although we have removed some of the groups, uh, the chemistry, the requirements for re interaction with the, uh, the opioid receptor for activity, for analgesic activity, are still maintained. R2 and R3 are essential. I had already mentioned that for MU receptor affinity. So you must have them for receptor affinity. You normally small alkyl groups, they must have specific orientation as we're going to see. And we have said that one of them is also important in maintaining the quaternary carbon, which indeed is a necessity for activity. You can see a lot of similarities. The only thing we are changing is the numbering. The structure the relationship of the benzomorphans for us, the same pattern as that of the morphinans, and of course, also the one the, the one of the morphine analogs, the nitrogen substituent R3 follows the same rules as the morphinans and the morphine. So same rule, the nitrogen substituent R3. However, antagonist substituent produce analogs with a higher agonist antagonist ratio. However, the antagonist substituent produce analogs with a higher agonist antagonist ratio. That's all that that means is that when you put like the allyl group, you remember when we put the allyl group, when we put the methacyclopropyl group, the resultant compound has higher agonist activity than antagonist activity as compared with the others, which had a higher antagonist activity compared to the agonist activity. So that, that, is, the only, that is just an interchange, but uh, the effect is still the same. So when you put an, an allyl group, when you put a cyclopropyl, a methyl cyclopropyl group, you introduce antagonist activity, but not as much as you'd have introduced in the morphinan and in the morphine analogs. R1 and R2 substituent must be present to supply the vestiges of, of the ring C. So this must be there. They are just like the remains, you know, it's like what has remained of ring C and they must be there and they must carry a precise, a specific orientation for them to have activity. R2 must be alpha facing down. If you look at, let's go back, R2. So for this one, this is R2 here. At position, the new uh, position number nine has to be down. And down is also what uh, we call vertical. So it's down. 
alpha or vertical and R3 is horizontal. So it depends on which one you call R2. So you must know which one you have joined where. So R2 must be alpha facing down since the benzene is bitter up for the analog to have agonist activity. So R2 must be alpha. That is it's facing facing down. Remember, I don't know, I believe we did draw the structure. We were for most of the uh, maximum activity, the benzene usually faces up. So it is usually uh, it's vertical but facing up. Now this one, so if the benzene usually faces up, now this one, this substituent is facing down. That is what we are saying opposite what uh, the benzene because the benzene faces up. R2 must be alpha down since the benzene is bitter up for the analog to have agonist activity. R1 can be alpha that is cis, producing analogs with activity about equal to that of morphine or beta. So now we've gone to the other one. So the R1 and R2. So what we are saying, where are they saying R1? Should be R2, R3. Uh, now have I drawn it differently? Yeah, I think we are using this one. We are using this one. So whereby this is, this is R1 and R2, but even that one doesn't show it nicely. Should have somewhere where it shows it nicely. It's okay. Let us just go through it. So correct, because I can't correct here. R1 and R2 must be present to supply vestiges of C. R1 and R2 are usually methyl. All are similar lower alkyl group. So mainly they are very small alkyl groups because you can even introduce huge alkyl groups, you will have. So the R1, R2 have absent are the R2, R3. It will introduce sterichidrons and therefore no activity. R2 must be alpha going down since the benzene is bitter up, the analog to have agonist activity. R1 can be alpha down, cis producing analogs with activity about equal to the morphine or bitter up trans producing agents four to 30 times as active as morphine. The bitter agents will support narcotic addiction. Again, always remember, you're going to see it somewhere. Whenever, whenever you increase again analgesic activity, you will definitely increase toxicity. So we are saying you have the bitter, the bitter uh, the derivatives and you have the alpha derivatives with the bitter derivatives uh, having very high to, uh, activity, analgesic activity. And since they have very high uh, uh, analgesic activity, they will also have very high toxicity. So the alpha isomers are superimposable on morphine, but have higher mu affinity than morphine. So the beta isomers have higher activity than the alpha isomers, and the alpha isomers have higher activity than the morphine. Remember, these are the benzomorphans, and therefore, uh, because of the groups that we have removed, we've already increased activity. But when we have a beta isomer, the beta isomer, and we look at them, they're called beta proteins. We are just going to go there. Beta isomers have slightly higher activity than alpha isomers, but as the higher the analgesic activity, of course, the higher they are toxicity. The alpha and beta isomers also have higher lipid, uh, lipid water particular coefficient compared to morphine, which further increases the analgesic activity. The weaker alpha isomers are preferred clinically due to their lower dependence and liability. Because the higher the analgesic activity, the higher the toxicity. I'm trying to see where I have drawn those compounds somewhere. How could I have forgotten? Yes, it's what we are talking about. Uh, not that. I was hoping that if I haven't drawn them, then I will draw them for you. I was hoping, I was so sure I had drawn them. Position nine, the one which is looking down. Let's, let me just correct something. So, 
so this is the R2. So according to my experience, the one I have there, it's, this is the R2 here. That is the R2. And this is the R1. It's what I wanted us to be very sure about. So what we are saying is that this R1 substituent, the R1 substituent can carry either an alpha or beta orientation. Alpha or beta means it can either come towards us or it can go down or go horizontal. It does not matter. So this can carry an alpha or beta orientation and without much influence of activity. But when we come to this group, the R2, the R2 can also have a beta or alpha orientation. When it has a beta orientation, it has a beta orientation that is going downwards, like the way it is here, beta orientation, all going down, all the vertical orientation. The resultant compounds are the ones we are calling beta proteins. Uh, oh no, not beta proteins, are the ones we're calling the beta, the beta analogs, and they have much higher activity than when it carries, the R2 carries the, uh, the alpha orientation. So we are saying the R2 can carry either the alpha or beta orientation, but preferably when it carries the alpha, the beta orientation, you have much higher activity, but that much higher activity will also uh, correspond to much higher toxicity, and therefore you don't even use them, uh, you don't use them. Uh, clinically, I will make sure I had drawn, must have left them out somewhere. I will, I will draw those structures of showing you the examples of the beta orientation and the alpha orientation. But all we are saying is that this position here, this can either carry the C or alpha, it does not have much uh, uh, influence with the activity. But the group that is at this position, when it carries a beta orientation, it allows the, 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 uh, the it allows the, the final ring, the, remember the final ring to completely when it, it gives the, the molecule the optimal structure, the more optimal spatial arrangement for it to interact with the receptor. When it carries an alpha, it has the alpha orientation introduces steric hydrons and the beta, the phenyl ring is not able or the resultant conformation is not able to optimally interact with the receptor. That is the only reason why you have the differences in activity in that depending on the orientation of these substituents, there will be a difference in the spatial arrangement of the overall molecule, especially the distance that is maintained between the benzene ring and the, uh, this, uh, the terminal nitrogen or the nitrogen. Remember the nitrogen interacts with ionic bonds, this benzene ring interacts with uh, the uh, with hydrophobic bonds, we require to maintain a certain distance between the phenyl ring and uh, that nitrogen. And that distance can be influenced by the substituent at position number nine. And when it has a beta, you get a better activity, but more toxicity when it is alpha, there is a lesser activity almost equivalent to that which is found in morphine about twice, just about two times more. But of course, uh, you have uh, also the higher activity. So I hope that is clear that the orientation of those vestiges or those groups that were left from ring C are very important. We have said one of them, the R1 is even important in still retaining the, chiro, the quaternary carbon that we require. We have also seen the arrangement of those groups also. We bring in the cis and trans isomer and the trans isomer, at, uh, which is brought by the, the, the way the group at position number nine is oriented, the, tra the trans isomer will give you more activity uh, than the cis isomer. I think, as I've said, I'll come with the structures. I'll remember next time to have the structures to that, that I can illustrate it better. So we have the morphan analogs, uh, the morphan. Remember the other ones were morphinan. So these are morphan analogs or benza, benzazosine. We call them benza, benzazosine derivatives or benzomorphan. So you can call them benzomorphans or morphan because the benzene is no compound. And you can see we have the first compound, the pentazosine. 
and you can you can see this is r there is r what we have uh, we have put here r and r1 this is r1 here and this is r2 so what they i think they have done is that our r2 you know the compounds has uh, has been maintained as a CH3 because we did mention that you require very small alkyl groups for maximum activity. So you have the pentazosin, and you can see what is changing is that group there. I can make it bigger. So you see, this is so. so this is R4. That is R2. Oh, they done this thing. And I think this should be R. Definitely, uh, these groups are the ones which are at this position. My numbering might be wrong, but this this group here is what is found there. Uh, the R1 is what is found here. And they ha we have fixed this as a CH3. Because as I said earlier, you have maximum activity when you have small alkyl groups. And in most of these compounds, you will find that uh, uh, this group there, the R, this group R1 and R2, R1 and R2 are actually methyl groups for maximum activity. You can have a slight change, but those groups are usually methyl groups for maximum activity. So you can have the most important, we look at pentazosine, and you can see the group pentazosine is a bigger group here. Remember, we did mention when you have all the nitrogen, you have groups that it's only the four carbon atoms that does not give us any antagonist activity. Larger than four carbon atoms, five carbon atoms, like pentazosine from the word penta, it has five carbon atoms. Remember we mentioned and saturation at, N, at the N substituent also increases activity. So you can see this group here, the CH2, CH double bond, C, CH32, it's branched. And that's what we are calling uh, pentazosine, then it gives us good agonist activity. And then, of course, uh, the R1 is also methyl group. Phenazosine, we look at phenazosine, is like what we were mentioning before that you can't change this group here. If you change that group there and you have the ethyl phenyl group, then the resultant molecule has an ability to interact with the A site with retention of activity then the cyclosine the, the cyclazosine and the cyclazosine the, the, cyclo, the cyclazosine is just like all the others like where we were looking at the antagonists like now trexon and so on where or cyclophan where by now this group here is again the methyl the methyl uh, the methyl uh, the methyl cyclopropyl group and then ketazosine is where now here you have a double bond and then metazosine is the is the it is the prototype and it's again where everything is a methyl group you have a methyl group there you have a methyl group there and you have a methyl group there so methyl, methyl, methyl. And of course, as in all the other compounds, that group there must be a hydroxyl group for maintenance of activity. What I would request you is that you draw these structures out. Draw these structures out so that you can understand them better. But we are seeing the SAR, although very slightly different because we have said when you introduce a group there that is supposed to bring a lot of antagonist activity, we have said the ratio of agonist, acti agonist to antagonist activity is higher than in the other compounds, but the SAR is still very simple, similar. When you introduce an allyl group there, a methyl cyclopropyl group there, you have a tendency of introducing antagonist activity, just as we have said previously. Then when you introduce a large group, like what we are calling here, when the, 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 the group that we have here, and also, of course, we can be able to we, we can be able to write the name of this structure when you draw it out. Also, because you will look at the, the longest, uh, so if you draw this as methyl like that, and then you look for the, the longest chain, you will go like this. So it's one, two, three, four. It's four carbon atoms, and then position one, position two, the 
the double bond is at position two, and also we do have a methyl substituent at position two. So we can call it two methyl because it is it is two position two is the one where you have uh, that substituent because you must start either from here or whichever to still be at position two. So so if you number, remember you have said that this will be a methyl group there. So if you are to number, remember that will be carbon one carbon two, right? So the methyl substituent is on carbon two. It is not, of course, on carbon one, it can be there. So it is two methyl, two methyl, one, two, three, four, two methyl butene. So that is a, the, so to me, two methyl butyl, because it's a, so because when it's a substituent, so butyl, the one butyl, the one which shows it's an alkyne, it's an alkene. Okay. So we can't be able to name that that group. And all we are saying is that that group, which is of course a larger group, that group, which is a larger group, will improve on uh, the agonist activity because, as we had said, interact with that. And the same thing we had said earlier when we look at phenazo uh, K, which again is the same. And we have we are giving reasons, even as we talked about buprenorphine, etorphine, the same, same SAR, whereby we are saying the group that you find in that position will bring activity. In fact, I think I have drawn it. It will bring a particular activity depending, depending on what kind of a group it is. What is the size of that group? What type of a group is it? Is it unsaturated? Is it uh three carbon atoms is it uh, strained and all those things we have mentioned them as we have moved along so you can see the metazosine is where you have everything methyl group benazosine again two methyl groups at that position pentazosine again you can see that group and that's why we are saying if you are to number it you would go this way if you are to number it you always when you do the upac system you look for the longest chain and then now you look at where the substituents are and then you number the longest chain and bearing in mind the double bond must have the lowest numbers possible so you can only start from there number one number two number three number four so the substituent the methyl group is in position number two and that position number two is also where you do have uh, the, uh, the double bond so that's why we call the two methyl cyclohexyl hex hexene it's cyclohexene and then from there now we're putting an e hex hexene hexyl group because of the fact that it is not hex sorry not hexyl butyl sorry we had said sorry we had said one, two, three, four. So it's it would be a derivative of butene because of the double bond. So butene, so we will put it as butenyl. Remember, butene, because we have to put this E to show E and then N and then Y and then L instead of butanil. Instead of butanil, you put a T E. So we can't be able to say it's a thin, it's a two methyl, two methyl. And remember, we normally say but. And then here, you put a dash. In the middle here, we put a dash and, and a dash. And then you put a two, a dash to show that the double bond is at position number two. So we, I'm only saying that because this is a simple, instead of calling it that structure, you can't be able to give it a name. And that structure, that, that butanel derivative, that methyl butanel group, of course, is giving us, uh, is, is interacting. It's a big group. It is responsible for uh, the higher, uh, the higher agonist activity. And then you have uh, the, Ketazosine, so the ketazosine, sorry, the, the group, the, the carbonyl group is that position. That's why I was saying it's good to draw them and we maintain those methyl groups at that position. Then the cyclazine, again, that group there. 
And as you can see, and as we have discussed, you can see the hydroxyl group at position number three is retained in all the compounds because of what we have said that group is necessary for activity. So again, the SAR is just as discussed with that slight difference that we have said. Metazosine having all the methyl groups is a prototype with higher L, uh, lower with higher uh, lipid water partition coefficient than morphine. It's like there's a clazosine. The methyl cyclopropyl is a potent mixed agonist antagonist. It has high lower, it has low, high lipid water partition coefficient and a high incidence again of hallucinations. Just as we talked about the cyclophan, it is not the, that is a morphine and it's not used because of the hallucinogenic activity. The phenazosine, a new agonist, is more potent than morphine due to a fen, fen ethyl which we had already discussed that interact with the A site, increased lipophilicity. Ketazosine has a higher affinity for kappa receptor. So that, again, when we look at it, most uh, of the uh, uh, SAR very similar to the SAR we already know. That now <coughs> finishes <coughs> the benzomorphans. So we have looked at the morphine and analogs. From there, we went to the morphinans. We have now looked at the uh, benzomorphans benzomorphans aware of benzomorphans where we are saying the prototype is metos me, times of the names my not to be a bit the the, 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 the example is metazosine metazosine is the prototype then you have phenazosine phentazosine uh, and so on so and of course we have seen a lot of uh, similarities as we have seen of the other drugs so we are saying here bc we have removed E, we have removed C, but we have left two substituents at, uh, at, 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 at the positions where ring C was found, and those are necessary for activity, usually in small methyl groups, as we have already said. The next, we are still not done. Now, the next category, we are still looking at morphine, and we are breaking it down, and we'll see how far can we go. Uh, to retain activity. And the next category is what we call the four phenyl preparedines. Now, if you look at this structure, we have ring A and our previous ring D. That means we have removed the whole of ring B and the whole of ring C, but you can still see that at this position, they are very important. We must have a substituent. And this, the importance of that substituent is still to fulfill the morphine rule, where we say we do require a quaternary carbon atom. You can see that is a quaternary carbon atom. And that quaternary carbon atom must be two carbon atoms away from the tertiary nitrogen, carbon one, carbon two. And then fulfilled, we have another requirement is what we did mention, that you do require phenyl ring. You can see this compound still has a phenyl ring. You require tertiary amine. Again, it still has a tertiary amine. So again, we are saying uh, what we have learned, what we have learned is still very, very important and indeed is obeyed by these compounds for activity. What the, so most, most of the structural features are still obeyed for activity. Again, because the compound is even much smaller, we have removed the B ring, which was found in the benzomorphan. We've removed that and now we have only two rings and of course we number them ring a and b the final ring is still retained the prepared ring is still retained because you require it it is the one for now for this structure but as we move on we'll see whether we require the whole of the prepared ring or we can still uh, uh, cut it or we can still cleave it and still have activity so again because the compound is quite different it's the structure has changed the numbering again is uh, the phenyl ring has a prime, 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 and then with the piperidine ring, the other one, the nitrogen, I think, was current position number two, if I'm not wrong. But you can see now here the numbering starts on that nitrogen one, two, three, four, five, six. This is much easier. The one for the benzomorphans was going round. So that now is our numbering system. And please note from just from a glance, we can be able to, 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 to still highlight some of the groups 
that were very necessary in the morphine, in the analogs, in the benzomorphans, in the morphinans for activity. And one, you can be able to draw this general structure in this manner, whereby we are looking at that here, that here is one of our groups here. So we have this, so we are looking, no, we are starting from, sorry, we are starting, we are, our basic ring is this one, the piperidine ring, so that is our piperidine ring here. And therefore, we are looking at uh, this position number four here. Position number four here will be this position here, number four, because you can see the position number four is the quaternary uh, uh, carbon, whereby it will have a substituent, R3, R2. One of those substituents will be always the benzene ring. And you can see, although this compound does not have a, a substituent at position number three, we can have compounds that have a substituent at position number three because recall this when we are numbering this nitrogen is, is number one number two number three number four number five number six just the way we you know uh, we have numbered it because this is just a prepared ring. one two three four five six and therefore we are saying in some of the compounds we can have a substitution, a substituent. And usually, again, a very small uh, alkyl group, like a methyl group. In fact, in all of them, you get a, a methyl group, a small methyl group at position number three. And then at position number four, you must have two substituents giving us a quaternary carbon atom, which is very, very important and is separated from the terminal nitrogen by two carbon atoms. One of those substituents will always be a final ring. So that is a general structure, quite simple. And you can see we are talking about now two rings from five rings. And in this category is where we call get drugs like meperidine. Meperidine is the same as pethidine. Meperidine is uh, the same as pethidine. So that is our general structure. I hope this time it has agreed. Meperidine or pethidine, you can see R1 is a methyl group, which is that one. R2 is a phenyl ring, any of them, either R2 or R3. So if you call one R2 a phenyl ring, the other one will be the alternate. So that is R2, which is a phenyl ring. R3, you can see, is an ester. So R3, which is now joined here, is an ester. But it, because it is joining at this point, so the carbon is first joined to a carbon. So that's why we are still saying it's a quaternary carbon atom because it's carbon joined to a carbon. And you can see for most of them, the ethyl uses maximum activity or the propyl group. You can see it's one carbon, two, three. Uh, this is a, a bit different. This has one, two, three, four. But you find that in most of them, the propyl is the one which is most common. So again, we are saying in that position there, we have the we have one of the substituents being an ester, and we have said in some of them, not all of them, as you can see, most of them, uh, the R four is a hydrogen, and then of course the R will change. The R, uh, the R one will change, and most of it is a methyl group, but it can change with differences in activity. So again, you can draw out these uh, compounds so that you appreciate. The change in act, the change in structure, and of course that change in structure also has some relevance in the activity of these molecules. <clears throat> My throat is still a challenge. So if you look at meperidine, we have seen the methyl group, we have said the phenyl ring there, and we have said we have an ester at uh, as one of the substituents at the quaternary carbon, and of course R four is a hydrogen. If you look at bemidone, when you, you see the don, the don only signifies that uh, the phenyl ring, this phenyl ring has a meta hydroxyl substituent. So when you see a bemidone, a don, on, 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 uh, it is because of uh, the bemidone, it is because of the only difference between meperidine and bemidone is because of introduction of that hydroxyl group at the meta position of the phenyl ring, which is our R2. Everything else 
uh, uh, remains the same. And then you have the properidone, even this would have an OHEI, that was an omission for it to be correct. And you can see we are calling it pro proper because I believe there is an increase, there is a change in the length of that uh, ring and that position. But again, bemidone, because it should have a hydroxyl group there. Keto bemidone, now when you look at the keto bemidone, if you look at uh, uh, the other ones, these other ones are esters. That's an ester, ester, ester. Now when you introduce a keto, it means the ester has been replaced by a ketone. So the don does not have anything to do with this ketone at, uh, at, at, at this position. It is when you put a, a prefix, a keto, means that you have changed. You can see that's an, that is a, a nester, and now this is a ketone. It will be C double bond O. And then the C2, it's five. It's joining from one of that side. So the keto bed midone is when, again, you introduce a ketone, of course, more stable than the esters, and therefore giving us more activity. Then you can see now we introduce another kind of compound, the alpha proteins. Alpha proteins. And when uh, the proteins is a new name, and the proteins are for those compounds that have a, that have a substitution at that particular position. So when you talk about the proteins, they do have a substitution at uh, that position. So that is alpha protein. Then you have anilalidine. Again, the major difference is only this, the group here is very different. So remember this group is joined at this position here. So in, in aniralidine, you have a CH2, CH2, and then a phenyl group, and then H2. So that is just the difference in that group there. And then it has a phenyl ring, and it has the ester. And of course, it is not a, a protein. For, for whenever you have a myth, for a compound to qualify to be a protein, it must have a methyl group at that position. Then we have fentanyl. Now, when we look at the structure of the fentanyl, fentanyl and uh, fentanyl is used as a general anesthetic, very rapid onset of activity, also short duration of activity. We will come to realize when we come to discuss them, we call them anilido uh, prepared deans, anilido, because if you look at them, you will see that there is a slight difference in that you can see you have uh, the benzene ring, this is uh, the group here, here, remember our, our R, R2, we are calling it R2, was a benzene ring. So you find that in these other, comp in these compounds, you find that the benzene ring is separated. See, this is a benzene ring here. It is attached to a nitrogen, and the nitrogen is the one which is attached here. So therefore, you find that in the fentanyl, the anilido preparatives, if you're gonna discuss, you have this here, first coming to a nitrogen, and then the nitrogen is attached to a benzene ring. Benzene ring. And then, of course, you do have the other substitution. So you do have the other substitution, which is this one here. And you can see this again is a ketone. And then, of course, this is, of course, having this group there. So we call them anilid of piperidines, whereby, yes, the phenyl ring is still attached to the quaternary carbon, but it is attached through a nitrogen. And when we come to discuss, we'll see what does that nitrogen do? It gives us again the optimum structure, the optimum uh, uh, spatial arrangement for the molecule to interact with the receptor. I'm just, uh, we're just generally looking at the structure so that we understand them. And I know there's a, this one, I know there's somewhere they have made a mistake. This structure here, It's supposed not to, it's not supposed to be like this. It's supposed to start with O, C, O. But we are going to discuss that. So I, I didn't bother with it because we are going to uh, correct it as we discuss compound. And of course, again, from, from fentanyl, if you look at fentanyl, the difference, major difference of fentanyl 
and the other compounds is that you can see here where you see there is this group here and most of the others have a substitution here but fentanyl has a hydrogen at that position it does not have a substitution at r3 it has a hydrogen at r3 and that makes uh, but it, fentanyl therefore is a prototype we see the general anesthetics. If you look at all the others, you will find they will have an a, a substitu as a, they will have a substitution at that position, which is this one. So fentanyl, this was a hydrogen. That's all that. That's one of the difference. Of course, the substituent also at R1 could be different. Uh, for fentanyl, I think it should be a methyl group, and you can see this this one there is huger, is larger, and then of course this one has diophyll. So these are the substituents that you find at the terminal nitrogen at position number one. And then these are this, this, the other substituents, of course, which are substituted on the nitrogen. Remember, these are substituted on the nitrogen because we have said that you have the, the phenyl ring and then a nitrogen. And the, the phenyl ring is attached to the nitrogen. The nitrogen requires these substituents. It can be substituted with, it, can, it is substituted with a ketone. And then, of course, we have said uh, the uh, the the, the other carbon, uh, you can have a hydrogen or you can have another substituent. So you have this R2 here. Again, you can see that it is an ester. It's an ester there. We didn't have we didn't have that substituent in fentanyl. You can't see that substituent there is an ether. We didn't have that substituent because you can see you have always to have ch2 because it's attaching on that side and you can see you can also have so that substituent there is an ether that substituent there is an ether that substituent there is an ester then you draw them out and as i have said you can see the difference in this compound is that this is our phenyl group which was directly attached to directly attached to uh, the uh, the quaternary carbon, but now you find that you have a nitrogen between the phenyl because this here is what is going to the the is the one which is going to the quaternary carbon. So this nitrogen and then the nitrogen now is substituted with whatever group it has, and of course R four can be different. You can see R four for for lofentanil is methyl groups and for the other two is hydrogen. And of course, the general anesthetics end at that point there. Our fentanyl, our fentanyl. Again, you can see they have similar structures. All of them are what we call anilidol piperidines because they have that nitrogen in the middle between the quaternary carbon and the phenyl ring. And that also ha has a big influence on the activity. Then from there, we go to a different class. So these four phenyl piperidines also have different groups. You have the diphenoxalate. I believe you have had the diphenoxalate. You have had the loperamide. And you can. I hope you can appreciate the difference. You can see the structure that is attached to nitrogen 4. This is quite a big group. Two, it's a diphenyl substituent, a very huge group. And the same case applies to the substituent which is attached on ropenamide. This is very huge. And then you look at the substituent at position R2, and you can see again, most of it is uh, hydrophobic. Most of it is hydrophobic. You can see a very small substituent here, hydroxyl group, and of course the ester there. So these drugs, the diphenoxalate and loperamide, as we are gonna see, because of the very huge hydrophobic substituent, they do have deportization. And indeed, they are not absorbed. They are retained within the GIT. And these are drugs that you know are used for constipation. These are drugs, sorry, uh, anti diarrhea. These are drugs that are used uh, to stop. Yeah, anti diarrhea. Is it anti diarrhea pyramid? Yeah, yes. These are drugs that you use in case of diarrhea, you use loperamide. So they are anti diarrhea agents. How do they work? They work, you know, the, the, one of the side effects of morphine and the derivative is causing constipation. So that's a major side effect of the morphine and analogs. And therefore, the diphenoxalate, troperamide, they have very high lipid solubility. They are not absorbed. Therefore, you will not have 
any significant CNS effect. They are deep, they are, there is depotization retained in the GIT, and therefore they are used as antidiarrheal agents rather than for opioid activity or for analgesic activity again we will come so across them so all i'm saying is that we can appreciate the fact that we have several several different compounds and uh, which are being derived from stew morphine and especially the diphenoxalate and lilopiramide having very different activity the fentanyl the lofentanil again having different activity and even different indication because those ones you cannot take them you use them in the theater for very severe pain so use them uh, as, uh, as narcotic analgesics in theater and of course we have talked about the opioids which you can even use orally for just uh, for of course chronic or severe pain so this is explaining to us the proteins and that's why i told you the, the structure they've read the drone you know, sometimes I also pick the structures, but I know where there is a mistake. If you look at all the other compounds, and that's why I was telling you there is a mistake in the S in the structures that I have presented. Because if you look at all the other compounds, even the meperidine, the structure is like that. You look at your meperidine or the other structures, you will see. Meperidine, the structure starts with the carbon, carbon double bond O, O. When you see these two O's, you know one of these carbon oxygen parts of this. But for the protein, they sh this should change. So that was a, is a mistake there. It should change that such that you start with O and then you come C, double bond O, and then the group we call this a reverse ester a reverse this is the, the structure of the this is the structure of the proper ester but for the proteins not only do you have a submethyl substituent at position number three they are also what we call reverse esters and reverse esters is where the arrangement of the carbon and the oxygen of the ester are reversed so we call them reverse ester and if you can see this uh, that is what we are talking about. So I need I, I knew I would get an opportunity to be able to explain to you to understand that the proteins have two characteristics. Remember that's position one, position two, position three. Position four, position five, position six. So indeed, with the reverse esters, you find it is the oxygen which comes first, not the carbon. And that, of course, does destroy uh, the quaternary carbon. But they still have a lot of good activity. And of course, you can see uh, what we are saying is that they also have a substituent at position number three. So they have a substituent, at, a methyl substituent at position number three. And you can see when it carries an axial, that is a vertical. The vertical is also known as axial orientation. When the substituent at position number three carries an axial orientation, think about axial and alpha. That one we can remember. So when it carries an axial or vertical orientation, that is what we call the alpha protein. When the methyl group carries a, that, that way, a horizontal, uh, again, a horizontal orientation, that is what we call the beta protein. And again, as we had discussed earlier, there is similarity here in this compound. Of course, the structure is very different in that for the alpha protein, it's about one to two times more active uh, than morphine, whereas the beta protein is five to nine times more potent than morphine. Again, we will have the alpha protein being preferred to the beta protein, and this is just because of the toxicity because the higher the analgesic activity the higher the toxicity so what we are saying is that structural uh, in addition of a methyl group in the phenyl piperidines at position number three brings about some stereochemical change which has a major influence on analgesic activity as well as toxicity where we are saying when you have an axial orientation we have alpha protein when you have a, 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 a horizontal orientation, 
you have the beta protein and of course the alpha protein uh, has lesser activity and lesser toxicity than the beta protein this is just uh, to help us see how those structures are and in rd remember he did mention this is a group that is attached to the nitrogen remember this is our carbon four which is a which is our our quaternary carbon atom and it is attached to this is the ester because that's a carbon and it's attached to a phenyl group so all of them in that, that position you have that group and the other but the best would be to draw out some of these structures so that you can be able to see whether in all of them do obey the morphine rules because they did do remember i did mention they are there are exceptions to the rules there are exceptions to the rules and uh, like we have seen for the proteins there will be an exception of the quaternary carbon atom because that carbon is not attached it is attached to an oxygen because it has three substituents but one of the substituents is not a carbon it is an oxygen and that of course does not qualify to be a real quaternary carbon atom because a, a real quaternary carbon atom has four carbon substituents so uh, this is a structure of meperidine again and what we were saying when we draw this uh, this structure in fact this one they still have not the the the, the benzene ring usually takes an axial orientation takes an axial orientation and that axial orientation of the benzene allows it to interact with the receptor again maximally so you can see again position one two three and you can see from the peridine we do not have any substituent at position number three so it is not a protein and you can see again it has a real ester for its orientation so the representative for phenylpyridine so the, they are called it's a prototype was prepared as an antispasmodic meperidine in addition to us antispasmodic activity was found to have an analgesic activity at a lower potency compared uh, was found to be analgesic at a lower potency compared to morphine note that the compound follows the morphine rule so it does follow the morphine rule we have mentioned that is necessary the, that is necessary the tertiary amine is necessary. The separation of two carbon atoms between the quaternary, uh, quaternary carbon atom and the tertiary nitrogen also is necessary. Perhaps the only thing, of course, that is missing is the hydroxyl group that was found in position three of the phenyl ring but that is why we did mention that sometimes you do have exceptions to the rule to the rules but you can see quite a number three quarters of those rules have been obeyed it is a prototype it has lower potency as we have already said than morphine it has also higher lipid water partition coefficient of course it has good not very high but it has good lipid water lipid water partition coefficient you can see it has only that group the carbon the ester linkage that is what is giving it water solubility it has a short duration of action due uh, to metabolism of the ester remember esters are highly labile highly degraded by the esterases and you have a lot of esterases in the body it has moderate by availability on oral administration due to fast pass effect Again, fast pass effect is because again of the presence of the ester so the, the drug can be hydrolyzed even when uh, before it gets to the receptor uh, higher higher or it has higher oral parenteral potency and it has higher parenteral it should be parenteral potency than oral it, has, it is more it has been found to be have much better activity and given parenteral and indeed this is one of the two drugs meperidine or pethidine it's a very important drugs in uh, in 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 maternity very very important uh, drug in gynecology because for uh, sometimes when uh, the ladies cannot withstand the pain the labor pains uh, occasionally they are given some of this pethidine and of course uh, in controlled doses so that it does not have any influence in uh, uh, preventing the patient from being able uh, to push and so on 
higher order of switch as that has rotation around the sigma bond and the benzene axial arrangement gives the highest as i had already said that usually this benzene takes an axial arrangement uh, axial arrangement for maximum activity uh, the axial conformer is at higher energy level than the the axial conformer is at higher energy level than the horizontal conformer which exists in higher concentrations so we are only saying the axial conformer is the one which has better activity but unfortunately it's more unstable because it is at higher energy level when you have something at higher energy level it means it's unstable so we have the axial it's the one which has the higher activity but it's available in low concentrations because of that high energy level but it's the one which binds the receptor optimally and we will find out that when we talk about the anilido prepared genes that is like an, the ones which have a nitrogen separating this so you have the nitrogen in between here you find that that nitrogen assists in the achievement of the axial conformation making the uh, the the, the meperid, make sorry making the uh, those anesthetics to have very rapid activity the axial conformer and the peridine may, may bind the receptor in a different way from the rigid opioids it has a lower receptor affinity and lower antacid activity by the site a and the anion site d so we are only saying that you can see it, it has been found that it has a slight difference in the way it binds the receptor it is able to bind also the site a and we have found drugs we have also discussed drugs that are also able to bind site a binding site a is not as effective as binding site d so we are only saying that it is also able it is able to bind with site a remember site uh, site a is the one which is the one which uh, uh, these drugs bind when they have a large when they have they have this group which is extending outwards, they are able to bind with site D. We have said, site A, sorry, we have said uh, the aromatic group binds the, the site D, and that's why we are saying it needs to have a certain conformation. The molecule needs to have a certain conformation if it will bind site D uh, uh, appropriately. But do remember, uh, we, we have said it has slightly lower activity than uh, morphine has slightly lower potency than morphine. The esters and the vas, uh, so we are still at uh, SAR of phenylperidines, and we can talk about the esters and reverse esters at position number four are active. Again, nothing very strange. This is our position four, and we have said the proteins have the reverse ester, whereas the others have the proper esters and we're only saying you can either have the ester or the reverse ester and there is they are still active uh, this, uh, the simple ketones are also active the other and we have seen even when this group is a ketone ketobemidone remember we had ketobemidone even when it's a ketone the resultant compound is active so we are saying this group can be changed with retention of activity, it can be an ester, it can be a reverse ester, it can be a ketone, and you give examples, and the compounds will still have activity. Then we are saying propyl is the optimal chain length, excluding the ester oxygen. Propyl, and if you look at this, and I had said most of them have an ethyl group, so propyl is one, you exclude this oxygen there. So when you are excluding, so you have one carbon, two carbon, three carbons. So we are saying compounds with a proper linkage, linkage uh, between or linkage or between uh, proper substituent there have much much more or are responsible for for maximum uh, analgesic activity. As we did mention, there are times it changes. We had one molecule which we called the uh, gave a different name. It had a slightly bigger group, but I believe if you look at the relative potency, it will have slightly lower activity than the ones which have the proper. So we are just looking at the uh, various uh, the structural modification of the various group. The phenyl ring at position four of the peridine ring is necessary for activity and must be able to assume the axial. Po positions. So again, we are saying you cannot 
and replace the final group with any other group it requires to be there for activity. Addition of a meta hydroxyl group will enhance activity, and such analogs are called bemidones. So again, that is taking us back a bit to where we had the hydroxyl group. Although it is not, uh, it's taking us back to where we had the hydroxyl group at position three of the morphine, the benzomorphans, and the morphinans. So ketobemidone, we are saying here, it has that hydroxyl group, metaposition, considering one author, metaposition, and indeed, the, when you add a meta hydroxyl group, the resultant compound, for example, the ketobemidone is more, has better activity than the other group. When a reverse ester is combined, so now remember a reverse ester combined with a 3-methyl group, the analogs are known as prodines. So for you to call it a prodine, it must have a 3, remember in that preparedine ring, it must have a 3-methyl group, and it also must be a reverse ester. In other words, instead of starting with a carbonyl group, you start with oxygen and therefore lose, as we have said, the position for quaternary carbon, but still have some activity. The methyl group may cause enantiometric recognition by the opioid receptors. By saying enantiometric recognition, it's just what we have discussed, that that methyl group, its orientation is very important. If it has the axial, which is the alpha orientation, it has lower activity, lower toxicity than when it has a horizontal or the beta orientation just what we have uh, we have already discussed so therefore the orientation of that substituent at position number three has some influence on uh, the biological activity of the four phenyl piperidines because the activity uh, the, the potency and in fact also the toxicity is dependent on uh, the orientation of that group this almost what we have said, the removal or replacement of the phenyl with an alkyl, aryl, or an alkyl groups always uh, decreases. Replacement or uh, removal or replacement of the phenyl with alkyl, aryl, or an alkyl groups always decrease affinity for site A. Okay. Separation, let's first leave that. Separation of the phenyl and the ester groups decreases separation of the phenyl. We have this is the phenyl there, and you have this is the ester group there. Decreases uh, potency. This modification is results in a change in the distance between the nitrogen and the phenyl ring, a critical feature. This decreases the ability to bite site. We are only saying for these drugs now, this. Uh, the drugs we are calling these the four phenyl piperidines, not the four and little piperidine, as I've said. We are saying the phenyl ring and the ester linkage must maintain a specific distance between themselves so that they appropriately bind the receptor. If you change that, then of course, will destroy activity. We are also saying you cannot change the phenyl ring, the phenyl ring is optimal for activity. So again, we might not bother to mention the specific binding site, but we are saying when, when you have interference and you change the distance between the phenyl ring and uh, the ester group, then you interfere with the binding ability of the resultant molecule and therefore you will have decrease in activity. Insertion of a metahydroxyl group, this we have a meta, a meta hydroxyl group does not increase potency. Uh, does, sorry, does increase, oh, that's why I had to go back, does increase potency by 50%. And we did mention the bemidones, and the, like, does bemidone has higher affinity for the A site than meperidine, possibly due to hydrogen bonding to an adjacent site. Remember, our A site. In this case, it looks like uh, there is, as we said, this compound binds the receptor differently. Remember, when we were looking at the other compounds, indeed the phenyl ring was not binding the A site, it was binding the D site. But for this one, 
don't know whether it's, I will confirm. Um, I will confirm whether this is a mistake because this is somebody's notes. It's not, I didn't confirm. So we are only saying when we have when we change the phenyl ring and we put a hydroxyl group at that time at that position. For for me, we are looking at a similar as I had said earlier, similarity be, uh, between the bemidone or the, the bemidone and uh, the uh, morphines and the analogs in that uh, because of that introduction of a hydroxyl group. But I have to uh, we had already said that the four phenyl piperidines interact with the receptor differently, looking like the phenyl ring actually interact with the A, A site of the receptor rather than the D site. I will definitely confirm that. But that's what we have said. I remember you have just discussed that this molecule has a slight difference in the way it interacts with its receptor compared to the other compounds. So we are therefore saying here that when Uh, when we have a meta hydroxyl group, it increases the potency by about 50%. Thus, bemidone has higher affinity for the A site than meperidine, possibly due to hydrogen bonding to an adjacent site. Conversion of the ester to a ketone. Again, like we are talking of uh, the ketobemidone. So remember, here is bemidone where it is an ester. Yeah, is ketobemidone where it is a ketone. So what is the influence? Of course, we expect, as I had already said, much an increase in active potency and duration of activity by increasing the metabolic stability. Esters are more susceptible to ester hydrolysis. The ketones are more stable. Esters, so we are saying increasing metabolic stability. Esters can be hydrolyzed, but ketones cannot. Example, ketobemidone. So we are only highlighting further the various changes. And why do we have so many compounds in that particular class? For phenyl piperidines, we have so many compounds. We are only saying each of those compounds has that specific structure because that specific structure gives us an advantage whereby we are saying even introduction of a hydroxyl group, introduction of a ketone, reversing of the ester, and also uh, we said we reverse the ester, substitution at the three position, all that uh, gives the compounds or makes the compounds to have some slight difference in their activity. So this is what we are calling, of course, meperidine. And of course, we are saying, this is what I was saying, this is our active conformer of the meperidine, where we have categorically said that the phenyl group should carry the axial orientation or the vertical orientation. And of course, you can see a piperidine ring is able to carry, a piperidine ring is able to, uh, to, uh, to have uh, the chair conformer. And the chair conformer is much more stable than, is much, I believe it's much more stable. Or much, it actually has better, let us say, it has better interaction with the receptor uh, than uh, the, uh, the boat conformer. So that uh, here is just showing us uh, the conformation of meperidine or pethidine for maximum activity. Of course, we have talked about the disadvantages of that group in that it gives the compound a high susceptibility to hydrolysis by esters. So it gives us a short duration of action. It will also give it a, a poor bioavailability because of what we called the fast pass effect. We have discussed the need or the need for that group to be a propyl group. And, and of course, we have discussed the need for that group to be a tertiary. We have discussed the need for that group to be a quaternary carbon. We have also discussed the need for that group to be a phenyl ring for maximum activity. So this is just what we were uh, discussing. It's again now just an illustration of the same. So we are saying again, we have position one, position two, position three, position four, position five, position six. So. Of course, we have the axial orientation, the axial orientation of the phenyl ring. And we are saying when you have that position number three, we have that axial orientation. And this also has the axial orientation you find because of this being axial, and that is also axial, 
it looks like there will be uh, there will be a lot of interaction and that compound does not have as much activity as when you have this being axial and this being horizontal so the trans is which is the alpha protein i think you, you can remember just the alpha protein and uh, of course when you talk about the trans this the other groups i think they are the other groups that uh, uh, are looking at the trans is alpha protein it's twice as active as morphine and we are saying in the alpha protein this go this goes is current axial orientation that is current axial orientation remember for us to approve something look at something this one Yeah. So the trans, we can be able to see it. That's what I wanted to make sure we can be able to see. When you talk about the trans here, we are, we are looking at, remember, whenever we talk about trans and uh, and the uh, cis, we are, look, we, are consider, we are looking at this bond here, between this carbon there and this carbon there. And because it, because it is one, this carbon and that carbon have substitutions, and for you to call it a trans, the big, for you to call it a trans, the big substituents must be in opposite direction or in different, uh, they, must, they must be in uh, uh, different sides of the bond of the, uh, we are considering this almost to be a fixed bond. Because of this substitution, definitely will be a fixed bond, although it's not a double bond. So when you look at these substituents and you remember how we number them, we number them depending on the group that is directly attached to the carbon that is supposed to be rigid. Then, and we look at the atomic number, oxygen has a higher atomic number than carbon. So we give oxygen one, we give the, this carbon, is joined to that carbon, we give this carbon. So this, this one is for, supposed to be for that carbon there, give that carbon two. Then we come down here, Come down here and we look at this and this hydrogen we carry number two and this one will carry number one so according to my best judgment is that if the, the this group and this group are on opposite sides of the double bond the big groups are on opposite side of the double bond and therefore the trans isomer whereas if you look at this the big groups are on the same side and therefore the cis isomer that's the best way I can't be able to explain why they are calling one the cis and the other one the trans. I hope it is correct. So we are calling, but what is most important is to remember the alpha. Alpha for axial, so you cannot forget. Alpha for the axial orientation, and the axial orientation is the vertical orientation, and that gives you the alpha protein. And the alpha protein, which is trans, is twice as active as morphine, and of course the formulation uh, you give it as a resmic mixture, whereas the cis is a bitter protein, and this is nine times as active as morphine. It has a high addiction liability, and of course, to, uh, 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 it will still be given as a resmic mixture. But just as we talked about uh, the, the the other compounds that we we, we discussed, the, 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 the uh, we, remember we discussed the compounds whereby. These are the proteins, and we discussed the, the compounds where we were looking at the benzomorphans, and we talked about the substituent at R1 and R2, and we said the arrangement of those substituents, whether horizontal, axial, cis, or trans, has an influence on uh, the activity. This is just because of the fact that depending on how these substituents are arranged, they will give either a molecule which has a lot of steric hydrons or a molecule that is narrow enough or well organized to be able 
to interact with the receptor. So that is what we are saying, that that methyl group has some very important enantiomeric or stereochemical influence on the activity, whereby we are saying the alpha protein and remembering the protein also must have the reverse ester has much less activity than the beta protein, which has a horizontal orientation. We have very little to go. Are you still with me? Mekimi Asana. Tukosawa. Tukosawa class. Tukosawa. Are we okay? Eh, mnakimi yanga wakati nini? Tukosawa. Can I get some response? Tukosawa next week and i think but we still need one makeup students we need one makeup because we lost one lesson because by now we are supposed to have finished the narcotic analgesics as i say there are very many small units from narcotic analgesics. the structure of the structure the, the condensed format sometimes does not really ring a bell especially for these uh, four final preparatives because of the various you so saw they have about one two three four they have four they are not very huge molecules and they can have up to four substituents so when you draw them out you are able to say, to see uh, the uh, structural differences very well so i would request that uh, you draw them out just for practice you draw them out and we have also pinpointed the different structures you can have where the phenyl ring can have a hydroxyl group, you can have a position four, you can have a ketone, you can have an ester, position three you can have a methyl group, and then at position number one, it can change, it can change from methyl to ethyl phenyl to even more uh, groups that have a, a, an aniline group and so on. So you need to draw them out. And also we have looked at diphenoxylates, although we are going to look at them again, and operamide. And we have said these compounds have a very complex structure at position number one at position number one the group that's attached there is very huge so if you could draw these structures you could be able to note what are the structural differences and also try to explain how do those structural differences influence the activity of this compound therefore if you say we continue next week and we are saturated then i will also agree so can you sign in <laughs>